When doing computer forensics using autopsy, there's lots of interesting things that you can get in the extracted content area. And one of those things is going to be the operating system user accounts. And this can help us know who logged in, when they logged in, and various different information that we can find out about that particular user. So let's start out by clicking on the operating system user account that you see here. And in previous videos, I installed Autopsy and also converted a server into a file that we could then mount onto the server that we're doing the autopsy investigation. If if you missed any of that, just go back into the playlist and take a look. All right, so now we're in the operating system user account, and we can see that there's three user accounts. Now, this is from a server that I'm investigating that is a Windows 2016 server. So we can see that the default account, the guest account, and the administrator account are all listed there. And this basically tells us the accounts that you can log in locally into the workstation. So if it logged into a domain, it's not going to show that here because it's not considered a local account. Now if I switch over to the mounted file, we can see this is the VHD file that I mounted as a drive letter. We can see, sure enough, there's the administrator, there's the default, and there's public. Now the guest account that you see here doesn't show up in the user's profile here, and that's because I never logged in as the guest account. If I did, I would have to enable it and then log in as guest, and then you'd see a profile for that particular user. So I'm going to minimize that, and I'm going to focus on the administrator, because the administrator is really the only one that is logged in. If I look at the default account, we can see that the account is disabled, and the guest account, we can see the account is disabled as well. So I'm going to look at the administrator account, and we can see a lot of different information, such as the date created, date accessed, uh, what the description of the account is. We see that the password never expires. It's considered a normal account rather than a system account because it's controlled by a user rather than the operating system. So we also see other information such as the count, how many times the user is logged in, password does not expire as mentioned again here, and additional information. So let's take a look at some of the other tabs. First off, there's no annotations because there's nothing to hide inside there. However, under File Metadata, it gives us a lot of the same information that we saw earlier, such as created, changed, modified access, etc. Now, if I go to where it says Application and click on SAM, which is the Security Account Manager, I can expand a little bit more information, such as the domains, account, aliases, users, and there it shows our three users. Next, I can go into text, which doesn't really give us a lot of information, but hex can give us some information. These are the locations of the security account management where the files are kept for the various different three users that you see here. And if I go back to results, I can see this ID. So this the ID information is going to be kept in this SAM folder. So we see the ID is S-1-5-21, etc. And what that SID is, is the security identifier of the user. So if you're going to see the user, you're going to see the user inside this particular folder, which is the system root, then the config, then the SAM folder. And that's where it's pulling this information from. And you can see this is ASCII information that's being pulled from this hex information here. So how do we know what this hex information means? First off, there's mostly zeros here. So when we get to this last number, after that, it's mostly just zeros afterwards. There's a few letters here and there, but not very much is going on. So this is just a simple file that tells us where these different security identifiers are. But how do we read this? So if we take a look at 72, for instance, that's the first hex number. There's a website that we can use that will tell us what 72 and all these other things mean. I've pulled up a website called rapidtables.com. So here's where we can put in the hex input. So we can see the first hex input is 72. So I'll put in 72, and then I'm going to click Convert to ASCII, which is just basic characters. And look, that's the letter R. So take a look. The R here is 72 here. So if I do a 65, that should be an E. Click Convert. Sure enough, that's an E. So we know 72, 65, 67 is R, E, G, followed by F, P. And then there's spaces here. So there's going to be 0, 0, 0, which is going to be the same as this dot, 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 followed by the number 50, which should be the letter P. 
And sure enough, there it is as the letter P, capitalized. There's also a manual way of converting uh, hex to ASCII, which I will cover in an upcoming video so you can check out the playlist. So that way, if you don't have this website available, then you can go ahead and do it manually. And if you get good enough, you might be able to even do it in your head for some of the more common letters. So that is how you go into the operating system user accounts in Autopsy to do computer forensics.